Right. Yeah. Here we are nice. taking the uh, traditional uh, young guy and yeah. old guy roles. He's got the big bucket. So I've got the ceremonial amount. Of <laughs> hey, I'm Joshua James, and welcome to another Craft Beer Adventure Club. I am incredibly excited to stay. I have the pleasure of being here with Greg Cook. Sir, it is an honor to be here with you, my uh, friend. It's a pleasure. I'm yeah. glad to have you here on this. Uh... <laughs> This actually reminds me of my home brewing days uh, under, you know, under a gazebo in the rain. It's pretty much how I how I started. So, pretty uh, fancy brew built system here. Yeah, very fancy system. I absolutely love this system. I've had the pleasure of brewing on this a few times. It's the the more beer brew sculpture brew built system. It is. Um, it has all the bells and whistles. It's everything everything a home brewer could want. The recipe today, like I am so so excited to say, we are going to brew the original. Stone IPA uh, recipe, which we have right here. The original. Look at this. It's a test. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And yeah, so I just want to know back in 1997, it's your first year anniversary, you're brewing this, you're brewing this IPA. What were you thinking? What led to that moment of brewing this larger beer that just wasn't really seen anywhere? Well, um, if we go back to the earlier days of craft brewing, IPAs certainly were around, but they weren't a thing. Right. Right. So they were more for the insider. I can remember two styles in particular that seemed to really speak to the insiders of the craft brewing culture. Sure. Barley wines right. and IPAs. So what was I thinking when we were about to come out with the Stone IPA? I was right. thinking that Steve and I had agreed to do an IPA right. and I was looking really forward to the recipe that he created. Cool, cool. So we can be straight here on the credit where credit is due. It yeah. goes to Steve, right. not me. Although I, I do believe that I get some credit for believing that, uh, uh, fuck yeah, that's an awesome beer. Let's right. do that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. The grain bill, very, very simple in the early days. Just standard domestic two row, and then a little bit of crystal 15, just for a little bit more body and a little bit of color. A little yeah. bit, yeah. Yeah, just, a, a, just small, a, a small amount. We have these guys here. I'm sure the people who watch this show know what domestic two row is and know what, um, yeah, know what crystal 15 is. But yeah, just for a little bit of color. We're using 93.5% two row, and then just a small addition of 6.5% of, um, of the crystal. Because uh, we want this to ultimately be a uh, relatively dry beer, and right. it's gonna be all the hops that are doing all the talking, right? So, Primarily. Uh, yeah, and too much, you know, too much crystal can sort, of, uh, can sort of dampen that. I really love those light caramelly overtones. Me too, me too. Yeah, you know, that just, because this is like a, a, a um, God, just a, a more simple bready mm -hmm. kind of um, uh, barley aroma to it. Mm -hmm. And this one, it's got a little bit of that breakfasty cereal, like a really good quality breakfast cereal, yeah. not the kind with all the sugar and crap in it. Right, <laughs> right but, yeah. You know, just a really nice quality breakfast cereal. We have all of our malt down here. All right, yeah. Here we are nice. taking the uh, traditional uh, young guy and yeah. old guy rolls. He's got the big bucket. So I've got the ceremonial amount. Of <laughs> <laughs> we'll mash in there. Beautiful. Great. All in there. We have this comically large mash paddle. We can sort of row through this. There we go. As you'll notice from my body language here, I am supervising. <laughs> oh, it's smelling great. No, yeah, just, yeah just I always that's... do. Fantastic, fantastic. So we're mashing at 150, uh, just because we want it to be, uh, like I mentioned, quite a dry beer. So when we're mashing at lower temperatures, we're just gonna end up with a lot more of the uh, simple sugars that'll get eaten by the yeast that we add at the end, which is just gonna work for a lot cleaner beers. We then mash out a little bit hotter so we can cut off those processes and get a few more of those complex dextrins before we move it into our boil kettle. So, because um, that has to do with the percentage of fermentable and non-fermentable sugars that end up in your beer. Yes, so a more dextrinous wort will have more body because, yeah, it, the yeast is not gonna eat those sugars. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I am co I'm connecting up the pipes from our, uh, our mash tun into our boil kettle. Um, uh, then I'm also gonna connect up our hot liquor tank. So as we run this out of our mash tun, into our boil kettle. I'm also gonna sparge the remaining of the grains with the remaining uh, amount of the brew water. Rinsing the grains, getting all those complex sugars, those dextrins, all the good stuff that we need. Uh, flavor profile, color, all that stuff, so. Nifty little rig. Yeah, this like beautiful it. little sparge arm. 
Yeah, makes life really easy. On, on, on. This really reminds me of the early days at Stone when Steve and I were home brewing, because uh, I, I basically stand like this as he did the important work. <laughs> yeah. So now this is draining out. This is draining into our boil kettle. And we have now our sparge water. And as this goes down, this is connected correctly just before I flick all the switches. And now, there we go, look at that. So, our boil kettle is filling up with all of our sweet wort as we take our sparge water from our hot liquor tank that is rinsing our grains uh, down. So we have a beautiful, a beautiful chain of events coming through this big, this big sort of wavy, wavy pipe. So this, what we're doing right now is we are getting our sweet wort up to the right temperature, up to a boil so we can add in our hops. Uh, a lot of you may notice that we do have the lid on currently. This is just to get it up to temperature quicker, <coughs> which for this system, doesn't really matter. We have these really gnarly burners that get us there anyway. But for you guys, oh, there we go. Speaking of gnarly burners and coming up the temperature, yep. Okay. Gonna... If you see a boil over starting to happen and you add in your mash paddle in the middle, what the boil over is is all the coagulated proteins just gathering together. And if you put your mash paddle in the middle, it'll actually break the structure so they all collapse in on themselves. So if you do see a boil over starting to happen, don't freak out. You can add a lid on to get it up to temperature, but just uh, remember that we do want to take the lid off during the boil because the lid uh, is, is a perfect way for you to have a boil over or for DMS, dimethyl sulfide, to condensate on the lid and drop back into uh, the beer. That's something that we do not want. It creates all kinds of off flavors. So uh, hey, yeah, I'm, look, I'm, I'm saying this to all the different, all the different cameras, yeah. make it impossible for you to cut it together. So uh, Just say no to DMS, kids. <laughs> say no to DMS, yeah. Cool. So we're at we're you at need a boil. To, uh, ceremonially um, break up that structure. Yes, please. There we okay. go. Yeah. Great job. So I yeah. do more than just supervise. So, okay. So for our recipe, we are using Again. Chinook and Columbus uh, or Mag and or, and or and or slash. But this is our bittering hop. So. It's just the most important thing is we're aiming for 75 IBUs for right. this beer. Would you like to add in one while I add sure. in the other? Should we? Let's do it. Boom. Boom. There we go. There you go. Perfect. The aroma now, all those multi aromas we got while we were doing the mash have all just, all just gone, and now we have these, yeah. these gorgeous, uh, gorgeous hop aromas that are replacing it. Hop aromas that we don't want to get too attached to because we are doing a 90 minute boil. So We're flying away right now. All this aroma is going to dissipate. The important thing that we want from this are the alpha acid units that we want to uh, uh, get into our beer. We are now isomerizing uh, alpha acids into iso alpha acids, which basically just means they become soluble in the solution. So we get, uh, we can perceive that lovely bitterness in the, and in the finished product. Okay, so <sighs> we are moments, mere moments away of the end of our boil. Okay. So that's uh, exciting enough to get some adrenaline going. Yes. Here. So the last thing we need to do is we need to add in our centennial Wait. hops, our aroma hops. Mm -hmm. cent does centennial sound familiar? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, that, that is just, it's this classic yeah. hop that we really gravitated to right, right off the bat for Stone yeah. IPA. It's great. And, and while I love IPAs that have, you know, maybe 12 different hops right. or all this stuff going on, there is something about bringing back in that simplicity. Yes. Now, of course, Stone IPA today does have a blend of hops, so it's not just the Centennial. This mm -hmm. is the very first original Stone IPA recipe that we've updated just a little bit. The, uh, the, the 1.1 version. Right. It's not a full 2.0 because it really is pretty true to the original version with just a little bit of tweaks on top. Right, right. Uh, but this is yeah. uh, just that. I know, it's still. That's it's amazing, and it is, it's completely, yeah, it's, it is synonymous with that, with that mm. IPA recipe, just that, that smell. It's, yes. it's, it's really great. So, yeah, we are there. Flame out, and then let's get these hops in. And do you want to do the stirring? You I would be happy to. Yeah, so, let's get these all in there. Just get it. Okay, they actually break apart quite quickly, the, the yeah. hot pellets. All hot pellets for this recipe as well, as stated in uh, Mitch Steele's book right. as well. Right. I actually really like hot pellets because yeah. they're very stable. They preserve all the aroma and mm -hmm. character and flavor that you really love in the hops. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're very functional from a brewing so. perspective, both home brewing and professional brewing. Right. Uh, we've had our Whirlpool edition of Centennial Hops to give that nice big hint of that wonderful classic, uh, classic aroma. 
Uh, now let's get let's get our, uh, our chiller in there and get this get this chilled down okay. so we can get it into our fermenter as quickly as possible. Fantastic. So, awesome. Here's one I prepared earlier. Oh yeah, there so, it is. We've just kept this in some sanitized bucket with sanitizing solution. What I would recommend for you guys though is add your your wort chiller 15 minutes before the end of your boil. That way it's gonna kill any any germs that you have on there. Um, we're being a little bit naughty, but we did have a sanitized bucket. I'm sure everything is going to be absolutely fine. I think fine. it's great. Uh, so, yeah, all we have to do is put this right in the beer like so. And, of course, it's okay to use a garden hose for something like this because this water is ne staying within the, the pipes. Yes. And not in intermingling at all with the... It never actually touches the beer, exactly. Now, these... It's, known as a, a copper coil or a wort chiller, the, the wort being, which was our sweet wort, now that we've added our hop, added hops to it, it is now just wort, because it is balanced. We have the bitterness and the sweetness all sort of balanced out. There's a tiny okay, leak. Okay, we got nothing. a little bit of a bit from here. See, home brewing is all about improvisation. Right. <laughs> solving, solving problems as they occur. So yeah, so what's happening now is our cold water is running through the copper coil and it is taking out all of the uh, all of the heat with it. So if you were to feel this, this one is super cold, which is our input, and this one is really hot. So as it goes in, it drags the heat out. Okay, now we are nice and chilled. We can fill our fermenter. So just a matter of running this through easy as that. A great cook, it has been an absolute pleasure to brew with you today. The original, Thank you. the original yeah. recipe. I mean, when was the last time you were around any kind of equipment of this size? It's been a little while. Yeah. Um, we, we certainly we have ones uh, like this because we, you know, our team does uh, the small batches sure. on, you know, and then we scale it up. Um, but I haven't personally been on one of these for quite some time. So thanks for oh. helping me like remember how this is done. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> taking it right back to the beginning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's been. It really has been an absolute pleasure. I've been a huge fan of oh, Stone for a very long time. So to be able to talk to you and you know just learn more about you and hear yeah hear your tale. Like I look forward to seeing the next five, ten, fifteen, twenty years. Thank After that, well. no more. But no, no. <laughs> it's been great. Thank it you, really brother. Has. Pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much.